Hello, Dougal, said Florence. Hmm, said Dougal. What? said Florence. Any minute now, said Dougal. Shush. What are you looking at? said Florence. Eh? Hmm, said Dougal. I'm waiting for my alarm call, and it should be going off any minute now. Oh, said Florence, the alarm clock. Tick tock, 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 tick tock. Well, said Dougal, are you going to ring or not? What time did you set it for? asked Florence. Just about now, said Dougal, and hid behind the tree again. Tick tock, 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 tick tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick. Hmm, said Dougal, coming out a little. It's very loud when it happens, you know. Yes, very loud indeed. Right, said Florence. Thanks for warning me. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick. Hello, said the clock. I'm the speaking clock. <laughs> well, why don't you say something then, said Dougal. What do you want me to say, said the clock. Oh, I don't know. At the third stroke it will be, or something like that, said Dougal. At the third stroke it will be, or something like that. <laughs> said the clock. Tick tock. Hmm, said Dougal suspiciously. He's just trying to lull us into a false sense of security. I'm going back behind the tree. He's just trying to get us all relaxed and confident with his ticking. And then when we're not expecting it, he'll suddenly go off. Why do you need an alarm call anyway? asked Florence. So I can get up and have my breakfast, of course, said Dougal. Look here, alarm clock, old chap, said Florence. Are you going to go off or what? Because my friend here wants to have his breakfast. Yes, said Dougal. I might, said the clock. <laughs> Bring, said Brian. Ha ha, fool you. You thought I was an alarm clock, didn't you? Early to bed and early to rise makes a snail healthy, wealthy and wise, said Brian. Hello, Brian, said Florence. Hello, said Brian. Had your breakfast yet? Funny you should say that, said Dougal. I'm waiting for my alarm call and the suspense is killing me. Maybe you forgot to wind me up properly, said the clock. Maybe you left my safety catch on. <laughs> yes, maybe you did, said Florence. Oh. Yes, said Dougal. I might have forgotten that. Ah! There, I told you. I told you he was playing tricks on us. Sorry, said the clock. I won't do that again. Ah! Oh! Oh! I hate that. Well, at least you can have your breakfast now, said Florence. Oh, it gets me every time. Gives me the willies, that clock, said Dougal. Sends shivers down my spine. Never trust a travelling clock. Now, breakfast. Ah, nice bit of sugar. Dip it in black currant juice. Lovely. Sugar for breakfast, said Florence. It's very bad for your teeth. Not for dogs, said Dougal. Lying. Well, don't say I didn't warn you, said Florence. Zebedee. She's right, actually, said Zebedee. You should have muesli or wholemeal toast or something. Something to put the roughage in your rough. Come on, said Florence. I might go off again, said the clock. I said I might go off. Hello, twits, 
said Dougal. Hello, Dougal, said the twits. Into the lovely outdoorsy day. All springy and outdoorsy. It is unless you get hay fever, said Dougal. Hello, everyone, said Florence. Hello, Florence, said the twits. We were just saying how lovely and outdoorsy and springy it is today. Yes, it is nice, said Florence. Unless you get hay fever, said Dougal. Oh, the smells of spring, as our auntie used to say, the blooming flowers and the smell of freshly cut grass. Freshly cut grass? Where? said Dougal. Yes, and the lovely pussy willow on the wind, and the... Oops. Come on, Dougal, said Florence. It always makes us feel like flapping our wings, doesn't it? Oh, yes, it does, just like our auntie, flitting about in the trees on the scented breeze. Well, it just gives me a runny nose and sore eyes and a dry throat, said Dougal, and it makes me want to... Uh, 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 well, sneeze, actually, but I think I'm managing to keep it under control. Achoo! Achoo! Oh, dear. Oh, dear, you poor thing, said the twits. Yes, you poor thing. Oh, you've got an allergy. He's got an allergy, hasn't he? We'd better take you to the doctor. We'll soon have you sorted out. Oh, yes, the doctor will soon have you sorted out. Here we are. What seems to be the problem? Our doggy friend here seems to be suffering from hay fever, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He's suffering from hay fever. Yes, said Florence. He's been sneezing. Right, said the doctor. Let's have a look at you, then. Hmm. Yes. And I've got a runny nose and sore eyes, said Dougal. Well, all these things are stress-related these days, you know. You're probably imagining it. What you need is relaxation, something to take your mind off it. Have you ever tried hypnotherapy? What? said Dougal. I don't know, said Florence. Maybe he's right. Oh, yes, said the twits. Our auntie tried a hypnotist for a bad wing, didn't she? Alternative medicine, said Dougal. Well, why not give it a try? It's very soothing. Just relax. Breathe deep. You feel drowsy and sleepy. Relax. It's easy. Easy peasy wheezy. Easy peasy. Easy peasy pie. Count to ten. Let it all go and then. Just imagine you're as light as a feather being blown on the gentle breeze. Hm. Well, the earth didn't move for me, said Dougal. It was very pleasant, though, said Florence. Enough of all this nonsense. What you need is lots of exercise, regular meals, and plenty of rest. Oh, look, it's the flying second opinion, said Dougal. Who asked you? No, no, no. Dr. Peacock is right. You need plenty of rest. That's what our auntie always used to say. Couldn't I just have an aspirin, said Dougal? There, look, I've done my exercise. Here's our auntie's pillow that she made. Now you lie down and have a good night's rest on that. Yes. You lie down and have a good night's rest. Lovely. Hmm, said Dougal. A feather pillow, no doubt. Only the best for our auntie. It's lovely and soft, that pillow. Night, night, Dougal, said Florence. Yes, nighty, nighty, Dougaly Woogly, you poor little hay fevery thingy, you. Has Dougal got hay fever? said Zebedee. Yes, said Florence. And the doctors told him to get some rest. Oh, said Zebedee, thoughtfully. Ignore it and it'll go away. That's what my auntie always used to say. So long, said Florence. If there's one thing I'm allergic to, said Dougal, it's... Uh, 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 it's doctors and aunties. Now, what shall I do with this? Hmm. There we are. Achoo!
Hello, Mr. Rusty, said Florence. Howdy doody, Florence, said Mr. Rusty, and what are you up to? I thought I might go and pick some wild flowers and herbs and things for my nature project. Good idea, said Zebedee. It could be very educational. And quite enjoyable too, I hope, said Florence. Hello, Dougal, said Florence. Fancy going on a nature ramble? Hi there, hop pickers, said Mr. McHenry. Hello, Mr. McHenry, said Florence. So, you're going on a hike? Yes, said Florence. Just the right kind of a day for picking mushrooms, said Mr. McHenry, but make sure you don't eat any. Oh, no, said Florence. Yes, they spring up overnight, you know, when the conditions are right. Oh, said Florence. We'll look out for that. Hmm, said Dougal. Well, there's none sprung up around here. Come on, Dougal, said Florence. Let's go and see if we can find some interesting things for my nature table. Hmm, said Dougal. Mushrooms, yes. Now, which way do we go? Uh, this way, said Florence. Yes, said Dougal. I quite fancy some mushrooms, sliced up and fried in butter, have them on toast, or stirred into a creamy sauce with spaghetti. Oh, look, said Florence. That's interesting. Is it? said Dougal. Oh, we could always put them with some melted cheese and a squeeze of tomato puree on bread. Have a sort of homemade mushroom pizza. No, said Florence, we're not going to eat them. We're going to look at them under microscopes and things. <sniffs> Hello, Dylan, said Florence. Ah, a garden gnome, said Dougal. Hey, wow, said Dylan, waking up. Mushrooms. They must have sprung up overnight. <sighs> Either that or fallen from the sky. Oh, look, it speaks, said Dougal. Hmm? Now, Dougal, don't eat any of them, will you, said Florence. Why not, said Dougal. Uh, time to move on, said Dylan. Sometimes I think that rabbit would make a good specimen on a nature table, said Dougal. You can't eat them because we don't know which ones are poisonous, said Florence. I'd just have a little nibble. Be all right, wouldn't it, said Dougal. No, Dougal, said Florence. This is a scientific experiment. Ooh! What on earth, said Dougal. Oh, look, it got bigger, said Florence. I can see that, said Dougal. There's enough for a casserole there. I wonder if they're all like that, said Florence, picking another mushroom. Oh, oh, yes, look. Careful, said Dougal. I don't like the look of this. These mushrooms must be magic. Do you think so, said Florence. Oh, look, it's turned into a little umbrella. What's it playing at now, treacherous toadstool? Ooh. Oh, oh, Watch out, said Dougal. That's a poisonous parasol. It's got spots on the top. Oh, look, said Florence. It's got bigger again. Philandering fungus, said Dougal, who was a bit scared. I've always wanted one of these, said Florence. Oh. Oh, wow, the temperature's rising, said Dylan, and went off to look for some shade. Dylan, called Florence. Yeah, said Dylan, sleepily. Be careful, said Dougal. She's picked a Parasolicus Botanicus. There you are, said Florence. Try this. Thank you, said Dylan. Now this is cool. Of course, you know what's going to happen if they keep getting bigger, don't you, said Zebedee. No, said Florence. There won't be mushroom for anything else. <laughs> what an absolutely pathetic joke, said Dougal. Well, it was only a matter of time before someone said it, said Florence. Just glad it wasn't me. It was sports day in the garden, 
and Dougal and Brian were doing a last-minute check-up of all the apparatus. Yes, everything seems to be in order, said Dougal. The gold medal stand seems to be able to take my weight. That's the most important thing. Now, what else? Just smooth down the jumping sand for the first contestant? Yes. Hi, said Dylan. I've been working out a theme tune for the occasion. Do you want to hear it? Not really, said Dougal. Well, it's better than Ness and Dormer, I grant you. I suppose we'll have to attend, said Zebedee, and cheer them on, a bit of moral support. But I'm definitely not getting into a sack race or an egg and spoon contest. It's too embarrassing. We'll see, said Florence, and off they went. Hello, Dougal, said Florence. Ah, our cheerleader has arrived, said Dougal. Have you been practising? Not really, said Brian. Oh, yes, we've been training for months, haven't we, Brian? I personally use a combination technique, some weights, some aerobics, and a lot of tail wagging, what you might call cross-training. Now I'll just limber up a bit and we can start. Let the contest begin, said Mr McHenry, and lit the flame. There was a chance I might not have been able to compete today because of my injury, but luckily I'm back on form now, said Dougal. Right, said Mr McHenry. Now let's just check that none of the contestants have been using any stimulants, like steroids, perhaps. What? said Dougal. Does a little bit of sugar count? I mean, the pressure to win can be very great on the modern athlete, you know. Hey, I've got something which is really going to be like the right kind of vibe for the theme tune, said Dylan, who'd found a trumpet. This is an auspicious athletic event, said Dougal, not a pop concert. It's a knockout, said Dougal. Now, can we get on with the really important thing? Winning the medals? Mm, yes, won't be long now. Right, said Brian. Let's get on with it. I'll go first. OK, said Florence, and sat down. Hooray for Brian. Go, Brian, go. Right, said Brian, getting a little nervous. Here goes. Oh, oh, that was fantastic. I was flying through the air. I don't know where I was. How did I do? Let's hear it for Flying Brian, said Florence, clapping. And Mr McHenry had a go. Geronimo! Are bicycles allowed, said Florence. And as he steps into the arena, the crowd hush. He's approaching the four-yard mark now, and then with startling agility, he jumps. Oh, ow. Hello, dear hearts, said Ermintrude. How did I do, said Dougal. That must have been a record, surely. I don't know. No one's been counting. Was it a long jump or a high jump? Anyway, I thought playing was more important than winning, said Florence. Well, said Dougal, in the absence of proper impartial judges, I think we should move on to the prize-giving ceremony, don't you? What was that? Oh, 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 dear. Sorry, said Ermintrude. Maybe we should have had a weigh-in before we began. Oh. Now, who's for lemonade and cucumber sandwiches? Dougal had decided it was time for some Highland games. Come on, you retarded rabbit, 
You half-witted hare, we're nearly there, said Dougal to Dylan. Hey, man, this tartan is too much, and like my kilt is killing me, said Dylan. Can we, like, press the pause button on this whole highland thing? Hello there, said Florence. What are you two doing? Ah, McFlorence of the McFlorences, said Dougal. Are you coming to the Highland Games? Highland Games, said Florence. Oh, dear. Yes, tossing the caber, shinty, dancing a jig, that sort of thing. And like uh, blowing the pipes, said Dylan, and sat down to play. And eating porridge and watching McTaggart, you know, said Dougal. Hello there, said Mr. McHenry. Hello, said Florence. Ah, McHenry of the McHenrys, said Dougal. And why are you not wearing the colours of your clan? Are we having some Highland games then, said Mr. McHenry. Yes, said Dougal, and we'll be playing lots of old Andy Stewart records too. Will you be hurling? asked Mr. McHenry. Hurling, said Florence. Aye, said Mr. McHenry, Scottishly. Hurling the flurling, you'll be needing this. Hurling the flurling, said Dougal. Never heard of it. Looks more like a broken old rugby ball to me. This is not the Five Nations Championship. This is a celebration of Scottishness. Your flurling does look a bit forlorn, said Florence. Oh, not really, said Mr. McHenry. Just a few stitches in it and it'll be happy as hogmany. And that's like really happy, right? said Dylan. Maybe I could help, said Florence. Hello, said Zebedee. Hello, Zebedee, said Florence. Could you help? I'd like to mend Mr. McHenry's flurling. Ah, a needle. Thank you, yes, that's a start. Flurling, said Zebedee, suspiciously. I've never heard of that one, but then I'm from the south. There you are, you see, said Dougal. He's never heard of it either. Now, can we get on? And, of course, a real genuine flurling, said Mr. McHenry, is made from dog's hair. Is it, said Florence? That's interesting. That's right, said Mr. McHenry. What, said Dougal? Well, you're not having one of mine. Oh, said Mr. McHenry, but the games wouldn't be the same without a genuine dog's hair flurling. Keep away from me, said Dougal, you Celtic carnivore. Oh, 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 keep, keep away, you scheming Scot. How do you think I'd look in a sporran, said Zebedee. Pretty silly, said Florence. Hey, one of my ancestors was Scotch, said Dylan. Scotch is a drink, said Dougal, not a place or a person. When will you Americans get it into your buddy rabbit brains that being Scottish and... Oh, oh, what was that? You... There you are, said Mr. McHenry, and gave Florence one of Dougal's hairs. Thank you, said Florence, and started sewing. That really hurt, said Dougal. I'm bald now. I've got a bald bottom. I can feel the breeze blowing right up my breeks. I'm all chilly under the kilt, and it's all your fault, you sassanac on a stick. There you are, said Florence, finished. Thank you, said Mr. McHenry. Right, now we can go and play some American football. Now that sounds more like it, said Zebedee. Yeah, said Dylan, the Garden Giants versus the Roundabout Reds. What? What? Come back, come back here, said Dougal. Hmm. Wait for me. Do you need a quarterback? Hut, hut, hut.
There comes a moment in every dog's life when he reaches a certain, how shall I put it, maturity, when he feels it's time to write his autobiography. Rintintin did it, Lassie did it, the Hound of the Baskervilles did it. Hmm. Now it's my turn. Better do some research first. Oh, yes, the complete story in pictures. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember that well. And as Pluto said, the trick with writing is not to let even a pretty flower distract you from starting. Goodness, is it still only 10 to 10? Oh, well, better get on with it then. Or maybe just have a little writer's cocktail first. Before I really knuckle down to a good solid day's writing. I've already got my name on my chair just in case anyone's interested in the film rights. Like Sir Richard Attenborough, perhaps? Now, where did I put my glasses? Hello, said Florence. Isn't it a lovely day? What are you doing? I am writing my life story, said Dougal loftily. Oh, how exciting, said Florence. Can I watch? If you must. Am I in it? And is Zebedee? And Mr. Rusty? And Dylan? But you have to be as quiet as a mouse. I won't make a sound, whispered Florence. When are you going to start? As soon as I find my glasses, said Dougal. I didn't know you needed them, said Florence. When did you last see them? Well, I know I had them this morning when I went on that long walk among the trees to get some inspiration, said Dougal. I didn't know people still did that, said Florence. I thought it was all done on word processors these days. Oh, no, 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 no. Us writers have to get close to nature, you know, said Dougal. It's a tradition. Oh, I see, said Florence. Yes, it helps us to see things more clearly, said Dougal. Puts us in touch with the muse, as they say. Yes, I see, said Florence. Hmm, I never knew you were so talented. <laughs> now, let me see, let me see. Chapter one, chapter one, chapter one. It's a problem a lot of writers have, you know, getting started. Let me see. My great, 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 great grandfather Theophilus MacDougall was born in 1762. Do you think it's wise to start that far back, said Florence? It's going to make it a very long book, isn't it? Oh, said Dougall, it'll probably run to several volumes. No. Do you think I should sell the TV rights for the miniseries now, or wait until it's out in paperback? I don't know, said Florence. I hadn't thought about that. Are you sure you could handle public life? Oh, oh, well, I'm not talking to anyone from the gutter press, if that's what you mean, said Dougal. Now, where did I put my glasses? Very wise, said Florence sympathetically. I'm going to get a very tired paw signing all those autographed copies, though, doing the chat show circuit. Hello, Jonathan. <laughs> Hello, Terry. Tell. T. Oh, yes. I worry about you sometimes, said Florence. I shall need a full-time secretary, of course, said Dougal, and a literary agent, or two. What do you think of the title, It's a Dog's Life? Not bad, said Florence. What about Dougal the Hungry Years? Hmm, doesn't quite have that ring to it, does it, said Dougal. Or, um, Memoirs of a Canine Catastrophe, offered Florence. No, 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 no. I need something much more. Um, how shall I put it? I was a slave to sugar. Oh, now I like that one, said Zebedee, arriving. Oh, I was only trying to help. I know. What about the truth behind the dog? Oh, yes, that's good, said Florence. Or oh, what about the mask behind the truth behind the dog? Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, well, please yourself, said Florence, going... Now maybe I can get on, thank you very much, all these distractions. Now if only I could find my glasses. Hmm. Now where did I put my pen?
than you. Oh, well done, said Florence. It's nothing, said Mr. Rusty. I didn't know you could sing, said Florence. We do our best, said Mr. Rusty. Rusty and I have played together at the Royal Albert Hall, said Zebedee. Well, I'm very impressed, said Florence. Oh, well, what can I say? Thank you very much. Don't mention it, said Florence. Now, enough of this backslapping, said Zebedee. Shall we get on? Yes, all right, let's go, said Florence. Hello, Dougal, said Florence. How are you? To be or not to be, said Dougal. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing, end them. Who can tell, said Florence. Quite, said Dougal. Hello, fellow players. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Jasper, and I am here to play the role of the Scarecrow. Oh, really, said Dougal. Yes, now would you mind giving me a little room? I need space in which to project. Ma, ma, ma. Certainly, said Florence. Come on, Dougal. Well, really, said Dougal, I must say, who asked you to come anyway? Ahem. <clears throat> Woe is me. Woe. 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 Excuse me, said Florence, just doing a bit of improvisation. It is a far, far better thing that I do now is the winter of our discontent. If he tells one of those long stories about his early days at the theatre, said Dougal, I shall scream. I'm sorry, but I cannot possibly be expected to act in these conditions. I never work with children and animals, especially dogs. Well, I must say that's a relief, said Dougal. And the costume department seemed to have given me an old piece of tat from last year's pantomime. Well, I think you look very convincing, said Florence with a smile. Thank you, darling. Oh, don't encourage him, said Dougal. Can I help in any way, said Zebedee? Do we have a costume department, asked Florence. Well, not exactly, but let me see what I can do. He'll be wanting the star dressing room next, said Dougal. Naturally. Well, I'm not giving you an encore. No costume would be complete without one of these, said Florence. Thank you, darling. How wonderful. It's from the pink ribbon department, said Dougal. How marvellous. Now take your bow and get off, said Dougal. I'm afraid we couldn't manage champagne, said Florence. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel so humble. It was teamwork. Well, he wouldn't have scared me if I'd been the last crow on earth. Standing ovation or no standing ovation, said Dougal. Well, goodbye, Dougal, said Florence. Are we going then, said Zebedee. Had enough, said Mr. Rusty. Yes, thank you, said Florence. Those were the days, eh, said Mr. Rusty. <laughs> Those were the days, said Zebedee, yawning. Were they? said Florence. Hello, Florence, old girl, said Mr. Rusty. How are you, me old beauty? Don't ask. I feel a bit agitated today, to tell the truth, said Florence. Oh, dear. Agitated don't know the meaning of the word, said Zebedee. 
Have you tried Thai chi, said Mr. Rusty. It's very good for the nerves. I just don't seem to be able to relax. Fancy a game of hide and seek, said Zebedee. OK, why not, said Florence. Come on, everybody. Florence is feeling a bit tetchy, so we're going to have a game of hide and seek to cheer her up. Oh, super, said Brian. My favourite. Hello, said Florence. Party games, said Dougal. <laughs> now, how do you play hide and seek? Everybody hides. One person counts, said Florence. Everybody counts, said Mr. McHenry. Yeah, like we all count right, said Dylan. Oh, for heaven's sake, said Dougal. This is getting out of hand, said Zebedee. One person counts, everyone else goes and hides. I think we should all, like, hide in the same place so we can share the experience, said Dylan. I'll count, said Brian, helpfully. I didn't know you could, said Dougal. Oh dear, this isn't helping my mood at all, said Florence, tetchily. Come on then, said Dougal. I suppose we'll have to humour her. Hey, go with the flow. Right, said Mr. Rusty. Let's go, said Zebedee, and went. Uh, one, two, three, four, uh, seven, nine, fourteen, um, seventy-one, um, thirty-two. Now, um, behind a tree? No, that's a bit obvious. There must be a hiding place somewhere around here where I can get a nice cup of tea, said Dougal. Mm. No one will see me if I go fast enough, said Mr. McHenry, stupidly. Oh, this is so childish, said Florence. <sighs> Hmm. Now, let me see, said Dougal. This looks very promising. <laughs> hey, I'm invisible, said Mr. McHenry. Oh, this will just have to do, said Florence. Coming, ready or not, said Brian. Never find me in a million years, said Dougal. See what I mean? Myopic mollusk. This won't take long, said Brian. Nobody ever notices me anyway, said Mr. McHenry. Do you give up then, said Dougal. Well, definitely, said Dylan. I spy with my little eye, said Brian. Something beginning with Mr. Rusty. OK, you got me, said Mr. Rusty, who was beginning to worry about the time anyway. And Dougal's in that vase, said Brian. It was easy. How did you know, said Dougal. Hello, Mr. McHenry, said Brian. Lovely day. Cheat, said Dougal. And Zebedee's behind the tree, and Florence is behind the flower. Well done, said Florence. He looked, said Dougal. <sighs> Did I win? said Dylan. <sighs> You're meant to close your eyes when you do the counting, said Florence. Anyone for a game of Monopoly, said Zebedee. <laughs> Hello, Dougal, said Florence. What are you doing? 
keep away from my sugar, said Dougal. Oh, sorry. Yes, this is all mine. Oh, really, said Florence. Yes, I need all of this because I'm hypoglycemic, you know. Hmm. Oh, said Florence. I never knew. You poor thing. Yes, I mean, normally I'd share some with you, but under the circumstances, I hope you understand. Only too well, said Florence. Yes, this should just about be enough to keep my metabolism on an even keel, said Dougal. Oh, said Florence. Yes, otherwise I might start to feel a bit droopy and drowsy and weak. <laughs> and you wouldn't want that, would you? No, no, no. Anything but that, said Florence. Why don't you just take some exercise? Good idea, said Dougal. Let's go. <sighs> come on, come on, slow coach. Not so fast, said Florence. Wait for me. Got to stay fit, said Dougal. <sighs> yes, all right, said Florence, but within moderation. What's this, said Dougal. Looks like an onion said Florence. Yes, said Dougal. <laughs> Phew, smells like one too. Why don't you ask it, said Florence. No, I don't like to, I'm shy, said Dougal. Good morning. Good morning, said Florence. There's nothing like a really good stretch, is there? Could you tell us, said Florence, as politely as she could, what you are? It's definitely an onion, said Dougal. Looks like one. Smells like one. My eyes are stinging already. Do you mean cosmically speaking? I suppose I do, yes, said Florence. There are so many levels of reality, so many layers of truth, don't you think? Oh, that's so true, said Florence. Absolutely. Oh, no, don't start her off, said Dougal. I've always thought that too, you know, said Florence. Here we go, said Dougal. Hmm. It's an onion, said Dougal, plain and simple. An onion, perhaps, or maybe a beautiful blue flower. If you're a blue flower, I'm a pair of pink pyjamas, said Dougal. Hello, big boy. You see, Dougal, nothing is what it seems. Still smells like an onion to me. And you look like a pair of pink pyjamas to me. You see, it's all relative. Well, you're no relative of mine, said Dougal, huffily. For what is the secret of life but a never-ending cycle of change and mystery? Oh, good grief, said Dougal. Oh, well done, said Florence. That was beautiful. I think I can feel my hyperglycemia coming on again, said Dougal. I'm beginning to feel all weak. Oh, are you going so soon, said Florence, quite pleased. If you'll excuse me. Bye-bye, darling. <laughs> well, you're not having any of my sugar. I wouldn't dream of it, Petal. I think it must be time for supper, said Zebedee, whose tummy was rumbling. Is anyone capable of seeing life as it really is? Or is it all merely an illusion, said Florence. Oh, I think you're just tired, said Mr Rusty. Either that or hungry. It all seems so intrinsically symbiotic, said Florence. Don't ask me, said Mr Rusty. Maybe you should eat more green vegetables.
Dougal, called Florence. Hello. Oh, there you are. How are you feeling today? Any better? Not very well, as it happens, said Dougal. I think I'm ill. I've got a sore throat. Well, you can probably hear that. Uh. Oh, dear, said Florence. Yes, I'm feeling very fragile. Very fragile indeed. I'm going to need a lot of molly coddling today, said Dougal. Are you in the mood for a molly coddle? I'll think about it, said Florence. I'm a pretty little music box. I like wearing bows and frocks. And when I start to sing, your heart will go ding ding. So don't wind me up unless you want to be a puppet on the string. Hello, said Florence. Hum, said Dougal warily. Was that supposed to be a tune, said Florence cheekily? You what? Are you winding me up or something, said the music box. No, we are not, said Dougal. We wouldn't dream of winding you up, matey. And anyway, I'm far too ill today. Watch it. What you staring at? Well, not you, and that's for sure, said Florence, who was getting angry. Yeah, your face, your face. Oi, come, oi, come back here, please. All right, said Florence, but there's no need to be so rude. Hmm. You're coming, Dougal. Not on your nelly, said Dougal. And anyway, I should be in bed, really. You see, you, you've upset my friend now, said Florence, to the music box. I wouldn't say upset, said Dougal. It's just that I do have a temperature, you know. <sighs> hey, wow, far out, said Dylan, unfashionably. An organic stereo system. Too much. Peace, man. Just don't wind it up, said Florence as a joke. No, man, it's cool. I know how to handle these things, said Dylan, and fell asleep. I wonder what's good for sore throats, said Dougal. Talking less, probably, said Florence. This is purely for medicinal purposes, you understand, said Dougal. Okay, let's melt down into a groove together. Let's lay back onto some really cool sounds, said Dylan. Hey, stay loose. Oh no, here we go. He's wound him up now. I'm a pretty little music box. I like wearing bows and frocks. And when I start to sing, your heart will... Hey, man, quit the rap, said Dylan. Come over here, let's make sweet music together. Yeah, instrumental break. Yeah, beautiful. Oi, 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 you, mush, wake up. Wake up! Hello, that doesn't sound too bad for a change, said Zebedee. What happened? Shh, said Florence. They're making sweet music together.
Sorry I'm late, said Florent. Well, don't do it again, said Zebedee. Shall we go? All right, said Florent. And they did. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Hello, Dougal, said Florence. What are you doing? 19. Oh, you've made me miss my place now, said Dougal. Oh, sorry, said Florence. I'll have to start all over again now, said Dougal. Do you want any help? asked Florence politely. Oh, that's very kind, but I'm expecting a special delivery of daisies any minute as it happens, and I can manage perfectly well on my own. Thank you very much. Oh, said Florence. I'm glad you dropped by, though, because I meant to ask you, you wouldn't by any chance have any, you don't have any sugar, do you? I thought you'd given up, said Florence. Oh, I could stop just like that, said Dougal. Here we are, said Florence. The trouble with sugar, said Dougal, fetching the hammer, is that it's very bad for your teeth. Hmm, said Florence. Shall we go and see if your delivery has arrived yet? All right, said Dougal. Ermintrude was walking along the railway tracks. <coughs> no, nothing, she said. What on earth are you doing? snorted Dougal. I'm listening for the train. What does it look like? Hmm, said Dougal. Oh, said Florence. Yes, if I put my ear to the ground, I can hear a mouse scratching its nose four miles away, said Ermintrude. Cows can do that sort of thing, you know. Pink cow speak with forked tongue, said Dougal. Yes, I think a train passed by this way several days ago. Mm, a diesel, I think, but there's definitely nothing coming now, said Ermintrude. Well, I might as well sit down on the tracks and relax, said Ermintrude. Chew the cud, as they say. Oh, get off the track, you half-witted hippopotamus, said Dougal. There's a train coming. I think there is, you know, said Florence. Oh, nonsense, said Ermintrude. Don't be silly. There's something on the line. Help, help, it's a hold up. Hold, hold, it's a stick up. Hip, hip, it's a hiccup, said the train. Watch out for Ermintrude, said Florence. The trouble with sitting on the railway track, said Ermintrude, is that you just don't seem to be able to get comfy. Oh, it's a herd of elephants. It's a pink avalanche. It's got spots on. Hmm. Whoa, whoa! I can't watch this, said Dougal, and went off to pick some more flowers. Ah, that's better, said Ermintrude. Ooh, what's this? Daisies? What's going on here, said Zebedee. Looks as if I arrived just in time. Ermintrude's got her eye on Dougal's daisies, said Florence, and went. Well, there's no need to take that tone, said Ermintrude. Cows.
There's a bird up there in that tree, said Mr. Rusty, and I can't think of the name of it. It's a crested grebe. No, 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 they go in the water, don't they? Bar-tailed godwit, said Zebedee. No, no, it's far too blue for that, said Mr. Rusty. Snipe, said Zebedee. No, said Mr. Rusty, look at the wing markings. Crossbill, spoonbill, ibis, avocet, said Zebedee. No, no, no. Oh, if only I had my binoculars with me. Florence arrived and said hello to Mr. Rusty and Zebedee. What are you doing? she asked. We are trying to think of the name of that bird up there in the tree, said Zebedee. Well, why don't you ask it, said Florence. Very clever, said Zebedee. We didn't think of that. Well, said Florence, now we really ought to get on, you know. Yes, all right, said Zebedee. Chiff chaff, said Dougal. Willow warbler, woodpecker, sparrow. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Hello, said Florence. Not you too. Golden eagle, said Dougal. Wren. <whistles> oh, I know it, I know it. I just can't put my paw on it. Oh, honestly, said Florence. Does it really matter? Does it really matter, said Dougal? Of course it matters. I mean, it might get put into the wrong category otherwise, and then where would we be? Eh? Here, probably, said Florence. Oh, look. Cups up. And cups down. In a line, in a line. Cups up. And cups down. Roundabout. Figure of six, hopsy downsy, pick up sticks. They look very fit, said Florence. They train for years, you know, said Dougal. Yes, all my girls are hand picked. Cups up, cups down. They start training when they are just one day old. Up the cups, down the cups. I wish I could do that, said Florence. Hmm, said Dougal. The trick is to make it look easy. Yes, seven hours of practice a day and no late nights for any of my girls. You have to be completely dedicated, you know. Oh, yes, you have to watch your diet, practice every day, no time for anything else at all, said Dougal. Three by three, two by four. Hopsy downsy, push the floor. We really ought to do more exercise, you know, said Florence. Speak for yourself, said Dougal. Come along, girls. Mind you, you have to be born with the right build in the first place, said Dougal. What's that supposed to mean, said Florence? Hupsy, downsy, hupsy wupsy, downsy bouncy. I mean, having a slender stem must help a bit, don't you think, said Dougal. Are you coming? Yes, said Florence. And of course, none of them has an ounce of brain, said Dougal. No grey matter at all. They're all as thick as two planks. Of course, said Florence. I don't see what all the fuss is about, said Zebedee. Nothing to it. Zebedee, are you coming? 
called Mr. Rusty, with uncharacteristic impatience. Yes, said Zebedee. What is it? Well, I just thought there wasn't a lot happening and it was time you put in an appearance, said Mr. Rusty, cheekily. I was just coming anyway, said Zebedee. I hate that when people tell you to do something you're already doing, don't you? Well, pardon me for thinking, said Mr. Rusty. Pardon me, said Zebedee, who must have got out of bed the wrong side that morning. Pardon me? Pardon me? Form two straight lines, said Glasnostia, the carafe. You heard her, two straight lines, said Dougal. What are you doing, Dylan, asked Florence. I thought I might like accompany the chicks on my old guitar, said Dylan. Where I come from, said Glasnostia, cups up, cups down. We practice not with guitar, hupsy, downsy, but with beautiful violin. Hey, that's cool, no problem, said Dylan. I can handle that. Hupsy, downsy. Is this ballet, said Mr. McHenry. I love ballet almost as much as I love opera. No, is not ballet, said Glasnostia. Cups up, cups down. Is how you say, synchronistic gymnastic. Well, I think it's holistic, said Dylan, getting into the flow. I think it's fantastic, said Brian. And now, please, attention girls, double time, said Glasnostia. Well, it all looks a bit samey to me, said Ermintrude, who was probably just a teeny-weeny little bit jealous. I'd like to see you have a go, said Dougal. Hey, can we slow down, said Dylan, whose arm was getting tired. Where I come from, we never go slow, said Glasnostia. Cups hop. We work. We work. We work. said Dylan, falling asleep. Cups up, cups up, up, up. But the cups were getting a little bit tired. She's right, you know, said Dougal. It's tough, but you've just got to pick yourself up, dust yourself down and try again. Hmm, said Florence. Don't they even get a tea break? Yes, said Glasnostia. Every leap year. Sometimes, said Zebedee. You can have so much of a good thing that it starts to really get on your nerves. Yes, said Florence. I think you're right. A nice gentle stroll is more my idea of having fun. Hmm. And it gives you plenty of time for thinking. I've written out a list of rules and regulations for us to follow, said Mr. Rusty. I'm fed up with people rushing around and coming and going as they please. Hi, said Florence. He's right, you know, said Zebedee. It's mayhem. And I've painted a warning sign. Ah, wise man, said Zebedee. If we all did that, the world would be a better place. 
Yes, it's time we had a proper highway code, said Dougal. You never know who you might bump into round here. Yeah, like some days I can't even hear myself thinking, said Dylan. I think we should have restricted parking zones and laybys and pedestrian precincts, said Ermintrude. Yes, it gets very crowded up there sometimes in that tree. I mean, yesterday I was stuck there for three hours just trying to get a branch to sing on. Oh, I know. I've always said we should have traffic lights up there. I've always wanted to be a traffic warden, not so much because of the uniform, but because I like meeting people and winding them up. I don't think we'd have any problems at all if everybody was like me, environmentally sound, punctual, reliable... Oops. Ah, uh, yes, now, that wasn't meant to happen. Right. Ooh. Comfy girls, off we go. There should definitely be cycle lanes and everyone should wear more visible clothing, said Mr McHenry. And the speed limit. Don't forget the speed limit, said Brian. Right, said Zebedee. When moving across the garden, the following procedures should be observed. I'm all ears, said Brian. Look to the left and the right, check thoroughly in all directions that you're not obstructing a stationary object, then after ensuring that you're in an upright position, proceed with caution. Or on a bicycle, said Mr McHenry, not quite understanding. Are we all agreed, said Zebedee? They were. The following hazard warnings should be observed at all times. Penelope? Warning, web ahead, said Penelope. Oh, uh, right, uh, wow, said Dylan. Dylan, are you with us, said Florence. And she put his sign up for him. I think that means no noise area, said Florence on Dylan's behalf. And what about you, Ermintrude? Keep on the grass, said Ermintrude. And Dougal? <laughs> Beware of low-flying cows, said Dougal. Well, I don't find that amusing at all, actually, said Ermintrude, and I don't think I'm going to play any more. And she left. Oh, come on, Ermintrude, said Florence. This is only going to work if we all agree to abide by the rules. Pedal power, said Mr McHenry, irrelevantly. Oh, not bad, said the train. Well, what have you got? asked Florence. Let the train take the strain, said the train. Oh, yes, that's good. No singing between the hours of 8.30 and 1.30 and 3 o'clock and 7.30 on weekends and on weekdays, 8 o'clock to 11.30, unless you're displaying the appropriate permit. That shouldn't be too difficult to remember, said Florence. What was it again? This is really going to improve our quality of life, said Dougal. My turn, said Brian. There's something missing, said Dougal. Flowers, said Mr. Rusty. Flowers, said Florence. Flowers, said Dougal. Yes, flowers, said Mr. Rusty. Flowers, said Brian. Just flowers, said Zebedee. What kind of a warning sign is that? I think we're getting rather cluttered up with all these signs, actually, said Mr. Rusty. I wish I'd never started all this. Couldn't we just turn it into an art gallery and call this one Flowers by Mr. Rusty? Mr. Rusty, said Florence. What's happening? Well, not a lot as it happens, said Mr. Rusty. Zebedee, Zebedee, called Florence. Where are you? Can we go and do something? 
I feel in the mood for an adventure of some sort. Actually, said Mr. Rusty, it's Zebedee's day off. Day off, said Florence. I didn't know he got one. Oh, yes, said Mr. Rusty, he does. Indeed, said Zebedee. I do have them every now and then, you know. Well, lucky old you, said Mr. Rusty. I can't remember the last time I had one. Yes, said Zebedee. Time to put your feet up, relax, and do all those little jobs that never get done. Oh, that's a shame, said Florence. I really feel like having an adventure. Yes, well, there'll be none of that today, said Zebedee. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go and unwind. It's Zebedee's day off, said Florence. Day off? Day off? said Dougal. Yes, said Florence. He's gone to put his feet up somewhere. Hm. Well, that'd be an interesting sight, said Dougal. So I suppose we'll just have to amuse ourselves, said Florence. I don't know, said Dougal. Just because he jumps around a bit, he thinks he deserves a holiday. We'd all like a lie-in every now and then. But life's not like that. Hello, said Florence to Ermintrude, who was grazing compulsively. It's Zebedee's day off. Is it? said Ermintrude. I'm so glad. I was just thinking yesterday he looked a little stressed. He pushes himself too hard, you know. Oh, get on with your digesting, said Dougal, you three-stomached vegetarian. Yes, but what shall we do, said Florence, sighing. <sighs> Hello, Dylan, said Florence. It's Zebedee's day off. Oh, wow. He's really out of sight. Do you fancy doing anything? Um, like uh, doing, uh, uh, which way is the wind blowing? Uh, like the answer is no. There's no point in asking him, said Dougal. He's permanently out to lunch. Lettuce eating loafer. Uh, yeah, like, wow. I suppose we could have a burping contest, or learn a new language or something, said Florence. I had a day off once, said Dougal, and I needed a holiday at the end of it. But it all seems a bit boring and pointless without Zebedee, said Florence. Hey, man, it's like what you put in, right? I mean, what you give is what you get, you dig? Well, I think we're better off without him, said Dougal. I mean, for goodness sake, it's not as if he was completely indispensable, is it? Hello, said Brian. It's Zebedee's day off. Yes, we had noticed, said Dougal, sarcastically. So I'm standing in for him, said Brian. Whee! Oh, said Florence. Well, that shows initiative anyway. Time for bed, said Brian. What's going on here? Hello, hello, hello. Oh, said Florence, it's not the same, somehow. You look like the inside of a biro, said Dougal. Yes, said Florence. I suppose you'll be wanting special treatment next. Half days, bank holidays, flexi time, I don't know. Well, you've got to put your feet up sometime. Oops! What's going on here, said Zebedee. Oh, hello, said Florence. Have you had a nice rest? Yes, thank you, said Zebedee. I feel very refreshed now and relaxed. I could do with one of those more often. Oh, well, back to the grindstone. Now, time for bed.
dear, oh dear, oh dear. The roof of my roundabout's been damaged in the storm, said Mr. Rusty, mopping his brow. Hello, said Florence. What's happened? It's the storm. It's damaged my roof, said Mr. Rusty, mopping again. Oh, no, said Florence. What are you going to do? Can you fix it? Well, I've had a go, said Mr. Rusty, but I think I'm going to need some help. What about calling the builders, said Florence, helpfully. Uh, well? Oh, they're all cowboys these days, said Mr. Rusty. They never come when they say they're going to. You have to wait in all day for them. Are you insured, asked Florence. Oh, yes, but that's not much use. It just means filling in hundreds of forms and doing lots of sums and remembering things like dates. And then they lose your file and you have to start all over again. Oh, dear, you have got it bad. I've been in touch with the council, said Mr. Rusty, and they said they'd send someone round. But no one's been. And that was three weeks ago. Well, don't give up, said Florence. I blame it all on the post office, said Zebedee. Sorry I'm late. Poor old Mr. Rusty, said Florence. Yes, said Zebedee. Come on, then. Hello, said Dougal. Lovely day, if you like that sort of thing. Oh, said Florence, this is a nice bench. It's very comfortable. It's time we had a bench. When did this arrive? Yesterday, said Zebedee. Oh, said Florence, well, it's very nice. And I think you've put it in exactly the right place. Yes, I quite like it too, said Zebedee, but apparently it's got to go back. It's not the one I ordered, said Dougal. Does that matter, said Florence? Does it matter, she asks, said Dougal. I like the colour. Is it very different from what you ordered? Yes, said Zebedee. Is it so very different? Well, yes, actually it is, said Dougal, vehemently. I ordered a hammock in pale lilac and a set of white garden furniture with a sunshade. Typical, isn't it? Takes months and months to arrive, and when it does, it's the wrong one. I definitely think the post office is to blame, said Zebedee. Nothing seems to work anymore. You can say that again, said Dougal. I mean, this'll probably fall apart tomorrow. These things are sent to try us, said Zebedee, philosophically. All you do get is mail order catalogues and advertisements for takeaway pizzas. But there we are. Aren't we? What's that got to do with it, said Florence. Yes, I'm afraid they all go straight in the bin as far as I'm concerned, said Zebedee. This is nothing like a hammock, said Dougal. See? See you later, said Florence, who was getting a little confused. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, said the train. It's chaos. You wait around weeks and weeks for letters and nothing, and then suddenly they all come at once. You should see it up at head office. It's chaos up there. Letters from builders, letters from cowboys, letters from insurance people. I don't know. It never used to be like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, the post's arrived, said Dylan. Does anyone fancy a takeaway pizza? said Brian.
Mr. Rusty had decided he needed a new house, and he'd been waiting in all day for the builders, but they hadn't come. So Brian and Dougal and Dylan and Ermintrude and Mr. McHenry had decided to help him. At least you can still rely on the railway, said the train, coughing. You lot just relax and put your feet up and let the train take the strain. Modern, clean, reliable and comfortable. And he coughed again. Hello, Mr. Rusty, said Florence. Help is at hand. That's very kind, said Mr. Rusty, but I think I'll be able to manage by myself, thank you very much. I've done the roof already. Dovetailed gabling. Not one nail in the whole thing. I used to be a bit of a joiner, you know. No, I didn't, said Florence. That was before I became a member of the Magic Circle, of course. You can't just knock a load of wood together and expect it to stay up, said Zebedee. You need an architect. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go, said Mr. McHenry, and Brian, and Dylan, and Ermintrude. Ahem, it's going to be a long day, said Dougal, I can tell, and I'm definitely going to need some sustenance. Hello, Dougal, said Florence. Hello, everybody. Have you come to help Mr. Rusty? Oh, yeah, like I've drawn up a plan for how I see the uh, new sleeping quarters. What do you think? I saw it as like this far-out geodesic eco-dome. Hmm, said Florence. Rubbish, said Dougal. These are the drawings from the Dougal-McDougal partnership, and as you can see, they're very, very exciting. Well, it looks a bit cold and dark in there, said Florence. Exactly, said Dougal. Perfect for storing vintage sugar. I think we should modernise, said Ermintrude, and have 16 stories at least. You might find it a bit high-tech, but I would be providing a resident caretaker at all times, of course. What about you, Brian? said Florence. Well, I've done something, said Brian, going all shy. It's lovely and cosy and comfy and homey. Just about what you'd expect from an introverted invertebrate, said Dougal, scoffing. Oh, said Brian. Well, I liked it. And you, Mr. McHenry, said Florence. Oh, I don't think we need a structure at all, said Mr. McHenry. I think we should do it al fresco, as they say. No building, just flowers. Well, we're not getting very far, are we, said Florence. Well, what do you expect, said Dougal. We don't seem to be able to agree on anything. One thing we are all agreed on, said Zebedee, is just how very important architects are. They all agreed. So all we've got to do is hit on a master plan which puts everyone's ideas on paper and then we might have earned our commission, said Zebedee. Well, I'll have a go, said Florence, but I'm not exactly sure how all this is going to help Mr. Rusty. Brilliant, said Zebedee. That's enough for today. Now all we need is some builders.
Hello, Mr. Rusty, said Florence one day. Do you think it's time I moved, said Mr. Rusty? I mean, I've lived here for a very long time and it's very nice and all that, but every now and then I wonder what it would be like somewhere else. Oh, said Florence, what's brought this on? Oh, nothing really. I just thought that maybe my life would be better if I moved house, you know, got somewhere a bit more spacious, perhaps, a bit more convenient. Yes, said Zebedee, arriving. You definitely need a change of address. I thought so, said Mr. Rusty. Well, don't do anything rash, said Florence. You should at least have a look around, said Zebedee, and see what's available. Yes, said Mr. Rusty, a little terraced house, perhaps in a quiet tree-lined street. Let's go house hunting, said Zebedee, and off they went. And a very good morning to you, sir, said Dougal. Allow me to show you round an immaculately presented spacious three-storey family home with magnificent views over the garden towards the roundabout area. All right, said Mr. Rusty. You lead the way. Possibly in need of certain <coughs> renovations, but retaining many original features, said Dougal. Yeah, it's like a wigwam, except for the bricks and uh, the roof said Dylan. It provides versatile accommodation and benefits from all the usual services provided in this much sought after area, said Ermintrude, sincerely. All of the windows are south facing, said Mr. McHenry. It's a bargain, said Brian. I wouldn't touch it if I were you, said the train, at least not until you've had a proper survey done. A lot of these old houses have drain problems, you know. And then there's the rising damp and the repointing to take into consideration. And the woodworm, and condensation under the sills, and subsidence, and cracks. Yes, well, never mind about all that, said Dougal. What do you think? Well, said Mr. Rusty, hesitating. It's not exactly what I had in mind, but, um... There are three things to consider, said Dougal, when looking for a house, and they are location, location, and location. Need I say more? Well, said Mr. Rusty, I suppose I'd better take a look around it then, hadn't I? Walk this way, said Dougal. Go on, said Brian. Yeah, said Dylan. Some of the floorboards may need replacing, said Mr. McHenry. I've never done this before, said Mr. Rusty. What exactly am I meant to be looking out for? Inspiration, said Dougal. Search me, said Florence. Oh, well, here we go, said Mr. Rusty. Phew, anyone would think they had nothing better to do. And he walked into the house to take a look around. And of course, said Zebedee, if you need any financial assistance, mortgages and the like, I mean, if you want to borrow some money, just ask. Oh, yes, of course, we at Dougal, Dougal and Dougal can do all of that for you later on, said Dougal, getting stuck in the scaffolding. I think he likes it, said Brian. Like, of course he does, said Dylan. It's a beautiful abode. Have you ever thought about life insurance, said Zebedee? All right, I'll take it, said Mr. Rusty, coming out again. Really? They all said. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, what's happened? said Mr. Rusty. It seems to have gone, said Florence, relieved. <coughs> Looks like you've been gazumped, said the train. Someone else got there first, old boy. Lucky escape, if you ask me. Was probably riddled with dry rot anyway, and the plumbing was definitely up the spout. Millstone round the neck.
I have here, said Dougal, the finest collection of jams in the world. And they're all mine. Marmalade. Oh, yes. I've got three or four varieties of that. A very popular jam, that. Very popular. Hmm. Strawberry jam. Oh, yes. And all the other types. Yes, all right, all right. Now, keep still, the lot of you. None of this jumping about. You're supposed to just stand in a row on a shelf and be admired. Yes, yes, get down, get down. I've labelled them all very carefully so I can exhibit them all properly in my museum of jam. And take them out and taste them occasionally, of course. <laughs> just one of the little perks of being the curator. <laughs> Hmm. Hello, Dougal, said Florence. What's occurring? Ah, an envious jam enthusiast, said Dougal. Not really, said Florence. I was just passing and I thought I'd see if you were enjoying yourself. You are about to witness the most important collection of conserves in the Western Hemisphere, said Dougal. You're lucky I don't charge an entrance fee. Oh, all right, said Florence. Step this way, said Dougal grandly. But the jams had gone. What? said Dougal. All gone? All my jams? My red currant jelly? My apricot and rhubarb conserve? My pretty little lemon curds gone? This is the work of jam rustlers. I don't think so, said Florence. Unscrupulous fruit and sugar thieves who would think nothing of spreading my jams on ordinary sandwiches and cakes. They must have been professionals, said Dougal. They haven't left a trace, not so much as a jam print. Hello, dear hearts, said Ermintrude. Are you looking for something? Something or someone, said Dougal. I'm looking for the gang who pulled off the great jam robbery. Can't help you, I'm afraid, said Ermintrude. I grew out of hobbies years ago. Collecting jam is more than just a hobby, said Dougal. Ah, a likely looking suspect. I shall detain him for questioning. Hey, man, said Dylan. Let sleeping rabbits lie, right? Well, actually, it's dogs, but never mind about that. Have you seen Dougal's collection of prize jams, asked Florence. Uh, no, I did have a jam once. It was totally far out. And Dylan went back to sleep. He wouldn't appreciate a jam if it was spooned onto a scone with a double helping of clotted cream. Which, come to think of it, is rather a good idea, said Dougal. Have you ever tried peanut butter instead, said Mr. McHenry. Please, said Dougal. It's very high in protein, and if you leave the skins on, it keeps in all the vitamin C, you see. The trouble with jam is that all that sugar is very bad for the teeth, you know. You leave my teeth out of this, said Dougal. Come on, Dougal, said Florence. Let's go. We're obviously not going to find them here. Hello, said Brian. Are these yours? So it was you. I might have guessed, said Dougal. I just took them for a walk, said Brian. They looked like they needed the exercise. They were getting a bit frisky. I was only trying to help. 21, 22, blueberry preserve. Yes, all there. And as for you, 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 slow person, said Dougal. Can I try this one for my tea, said Florence, taking a jar. Only if you treat it with due respect, said Dougal. Oh dear, you really do find it difficult to enjoy what you've got, don't you, said Brian. I don't know what you're talking about, said Dougal. Life is for living, jam is for giving, love should be spread and I'm off to bed. <laughs> Thank you.
Ah, chivalry, chivalry. The age of chivalry is dead, said Dougal. What are you on about now, said Brian. In days of old, when dogs were bold, said Dougal, and would fight the good fight for their lady. Even if she wasn't that interested, said Brian. Those were the days when a dog was a dog. When you could slay a dragon, swim a moat, climb a mountain, rescue a damsel in distress and still be home in time for tea, said Dougal. Yes, and have all your shirts ironed, no doubt. Shut up, said Dougal, you turgid tapeworm. Snails weren't even invented then. <laughs> Hello, said Florence. Are we going then, or what? Sorry about that, said Zebedee. Just finishing my tea. Oh, no hurry, said Florence, not wanting to spoil his digestion. dum de dum de dum said Florence, humming. Ah, me lady, I plight my troth to thee, and thy beauty which hath quite overcome me, said Dougal. Hello, Flo, said Brian. How are you? Fine, said Florence. What's the matter with Dougal? Flo? Speak thou with more respect when thou addressest me lady. Give over, it's only Florence. Yes, it's only me, said Florence. Oh dear, he's really flipped this time, said Brian. I shall pick yon flower for thee, and open doors for thee, and pull back chairs and things like that, said Dougal. And then completely ignore her and eat all her sweets, I know, said Brian. Well, I'm not polishing your armour. Take that, said Dougal, buffeting Brian, thou pedantic plodder, thou shabby shuffler. Why don't you pick on someone your own size, said Brian, you big bully. Yes, you really should try not to be so obsessive, you know, said Florence. You heard her, said Brian. I don't know. You knights errant, you're all the same. You go out chivalring and plighting all over the place, but you never even bothered to ask if she wanted your troth, did you? There, you see. You never thought of that, did you? The train had run into a spot of bother. His railway tracks ran right across where Penelope the spider was spinning one of her webs. Typical, said Penelope. Just when you get a gossamer going, some train comes along and tangles it up. What's going on here, said Dougal? That's my cardigan. She's unraveled my cardigan and turned it into a spider's web. That was my favourite cardigan too. Oops. You, madam, have taken liberties with my woolens, said Dougal, indignantly. Oh, said Penelope, excuse me. I don't know, said Dougal, you turn your back for two minutes and everything's been rearranged and changed and, and turned into spider's webs and... Well, I'm sorry, said Penelope, I thought you'd thrown it out. You haven't worn it for years and it was full of holes and anyway it looks much more artistic like that, don't you think? I'm sure it could be knitted back together, said Florence. I can't knit, said Dougal. Dogs aren't meant to do that sort of thing. They're meant to be bold and heroic and dashing and, and bark a lot, said Dougal. And plight their troths, said Florence, teasing him a little. Yes, forsooth, said Dougal, barking and dashing and plighting, but not knitting. Oh, by the way, Florence, said Penelope, changing the subject, that pink ribbon you lent me, thank you ever so much, but I don't think it's quite me somehow. Oh, no problem, said Florence. Mm, said Dougal. What's going on? Secrets? What's this? Oh, it's just a pink ribbon, said Florence. Stop changing the subject, said Dougal. We were talking cardigans. And making fools of themselves, said Brian. Dogs do a lot of that. Oh, I'm sorry, said Penelope. I forgot about you. <laughs> Don't worry about it, said the train. Cardigans are for wimps anyway. Curiouser and curiouser, said Zebedee. Time for bed. See you tomorrow, said Florence. Phew, this chivalry's hard work, said Dougal. In future, I'm going to stick to home comforts, slippers and armchairs, evenings by the fire, a nice cup of warm milk, book at bedtime. Maybe I'll listen to a little bit of